Okay, some real talk. How many of you have spent hours fixing tests that broke because someone changed something as small as a button ID? Again. And honestly, I'm tired of it, and I'm sure you are too. Tests shouldn't be this fragile. They shouldn't break every time the UI changes, and they definitely shouldn't require a PhD and CSS selectors to write. So when the team at Cypress asked me to check out their new experimental feature called SciPrompt, I was skeptical. But the thing is, this actually works. Let me show you. All right, so here's the reality of end-to-end -end testing today. You usually end up writing tests like this. And then a developer goes ahead and refactors the UI and changes one class name, and boom, your entire test suite is red. And here's what really bugs me. It's not just about fixing the tests. It's about the time wasted, the faults, failures in CI, and the fact that writing these tests requires someone to know the code base intimately. Enter SciPrompt. It's an experimental feature from Cypress that lets you write tests in plain English, and I mean actual plain English, and have them automatically adapt when your UI changes. So instead of hunting down selectors, you just describe what you want to do. Check out this example. Notice how I'm using just plain English to describe what I want the test to perform. And that's it. No selectors, no memorizing API methods, just describe what you're testing. But here's where it gets really interesting. Cypress isn't just another AI agent that takes five minutes to run. It's actually built into the Cypress test runner and has four main features that makes it different from everything else I've seen. All right, first demo. I got the simple e-commerce app here. I actually downloaded it. It's Cypress demo app that I find really helpful for these purposes. So let me write a test for a complete shopping flow. Something that would normally take, say, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes to write. I mean, obviously, because this is in plain English, it took me like, I don't know, a minute, maybe 90 seconds to actually write in this format. Now watch this. All right, here's my first demo. Let me run it. And look, look what it's doing. It's actually doing it. It's finding the email address, typing in the information, finding the password, adding a product, adding the product to the cart, adding the city, the zip code, the card information, and that's it. The order is complete. Crazy, all from just natural language. And that's not it. Here's what I really love. Every step is logged right here in the Cypress command log. Just hover over the prompt. It'll show you the screenshot that coincides with that particular step. So you can see exactly what it's doing. And it also shows you what identifier I used to identify that particular object. So all this information is stored for you to be able to review later on as well. And just to verify it's doing what it's actually doing just by looking at the screenshots to help verify. You could see exactly what it's doing. It's not some black box AI agent running in the cloud for three minutes. It's right here in your local test runner, executing steps in real time. All right, as you can see, it passed the entire flow from login to checkout, tested in about 15 seconds on the first run. But here's the kicker. On subsequent runs, Cypress caches these steps. So in CI, these run at near native speed. We're talking two to three seconds instead of 15. And if you have a large test suite, you know how much seconds matter. And that's way faster than any traditional AI agent I've used that regenerates everything every single time. Okay, but the feature I'm most excited about is self-healing. So let me show you what I mean. Remember the test we just ran? I'm gonna break it. Watch this. All right, so right here, rather than add, I'm gonna change this to buy. Really simple, but developers make these type of changes all the time. Let me save. As you know, in a traditional test, this would fail immediately. The test would be looking for the ad and the ID, and it wouldn't exist anymore because it's now called buy, but not with sci prompt. Let's run the test again. All right, let's see what happens. And two things you notice there. As I mentioned earlier, in cache, it runs quicker because it has it before. All right, notice right here, it was able to find the change. 
I didn't tell it what the change was, but it automatically picked up the buy rather than the ad. So the cache step failed. Psy prompt automatically reran the AI prompt in the same test run, found the new selector, and just kept going. The test didn't fail. It healed itself. And that's huge, right? Think about it. How many times have your team spent updating tests after UI refactors? This eliminates most of that work. And what's really cool is Psy prompt commands can be committed to source control and run in CI/CD pipelines, giving you self-healing achieved at scale. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is cool, but I don't want AI running in production tests. I want real reviewable code. Totally valid concern. And the folks at Cypress told me they thought about this. So once you get your test working the way you want, you can export it to actual Cypress code. Now I can commit this to source control. My team can review it in a PR, and it runs like any other Cypress tests, fast, reliable, and deterministic. And that's what makes Cyprop different from pure AI agent tools. You're not locked into AI forever. You can use AI to generate the test quickly and then export it to code when you're ready for production. It really is the best of both worlds. All right, last demo. Let's talk about what happens when things go wrong because they always do, right? One of my biggest issues with AI testing tools is definitely debugging. When I work with AI agents and they fail, I often have no idea why. But with SciPrompt, let me create a test that's going to fail. I'm going to tell it to verify something that doesn't exist. So I'm going to ask it to verify that the total was $777.77. Alright, I added this bogus verify. Let's see what happens when it fails. And obviously it fails, but what's cool is it shows me exactly which step failed and what it was trying to do and what it found instead. And if this fails in CI, Cypress Test Replay, lets me step through the entire execution, see what the AI was looking at, and debug it just like any other test. This is full transparency, no black box, no guessing, and you can see exactly what the AI did and why it failed. Oh, I almost forgot to show you what happens if you write a vague prompt. No worries. They also have this additional context feature. If a vague step is reached, a dialog will pop up asking for additional context. Once the additional context is provided, you can click save and the runner will move forward with executing the test. This updated step will also be saved in the IDE. So here's why I think this feature really matters. First, test authoring speed. I wrote the complete shopping flow test in less than 90 seconds. The same test would normally take about 10 to 15 minutes with, say, traditional selectors. Second, broader participation. Anyone on your team can write these tests. Your PM, your designer, your QA team that might not know JavaScript, they can all write tests in plain English. Third is maintenance. This is the biggest thing I always spent most of my time on. Self-healing means fewer broken tests after UI changes. And when you do need to debug, you have full transparency. And fourth, and I think this is important, you're not locked in. You can export to code whenever you want. Use AI for speed, use code for stability. You choose. All right, as you know, I love tools and I love tools that actually solve real problems that I've seen and I know my community sees every day. The fact that a solution like this is fast, transparent, and lets me export to real code makes it feel like a practical tool that I think you can get a lot of value from. Also, after trying it, if you have any feedback, you can provide it directly to the folks building this very feature by leveraging the feedback button in the local app. And I always say, seeing is believing, so try it out for yourself using the link down below. All right, thanks for watching. And as always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.